thanks for the introduction. Uh, glad to be here, uh, escaping from Minnesota's winter. Um, yeah, so uh, this is joint work with AT&T. Uh, we're basically uh, describing a proposal about volumetric video streaming. Um, so we all love uh, watch videos, right? But the video content we have been watching has been uh, evolving. Uh, so for a long time, people watch these traditional videos. Obviously, it's two-dimensional, and the users have no control over uh, what to watch. Uh, so recently, uh, so this 360-degree panoramic videos has uh, been becoming increasingly popular. Uh, it's still two-dimensional, but basically the content is uh, wrapped onto a sphere, right? So in this case, uh, the viewer has three uh, degree of freedom. So uh, she can control the roll, pitch, and roll when the video is being played back. But in this uh, paper, we uh, consider a new type of video content. It's called a volumetric videos. Uh, so ba they basically consist of uh, 3D animated point cloud or mesh. Um, so for point cloud, uh, each element is called a vortex, um, which is basically a three-dimensional point in the, in the 3D space, right? So it has X, Y, Z coordinates and also the color. Uh, for mesh, it basically uh, consists of a large number of polygons also in the 3D space. And these points and polygons are changing over time, so it's frame by frame. So it's uh, 6 UF. Basically, the users can not only control the raw pitch and raw, but also the uh, camera position. So there are uh, six uh, degree of freedoms. So these kind of videos are captured by a camera with depth sensors. Uh, it provides truly immersive telepresence experience. And it has registered many applications such as entertainment, medical, and education. So here I'm showing a video demo of a uh, volumetric videos, right? So you can see that it, the, the experience is really uh, immersive. Uh, but the issue is that if you, you can see the user, uh, he's wearing a VR headset which is tethered to a high-end PC. So uh, in this study, uh, we focus on a uh, more challenging problem, basically streaming this kind of volumetric video on smartphones. So the obvious advantages are uh, good mobility, right? ubiquitous, and much cheaper. So in this case, a VR headset is really optional. Uh, you can directly interact on the smartphone. But also there are challenges, right? For example, the uh, processing power on the device is much lower, and also the content needs to be delivered over wireless networks, uh, which may be uh, fluctuating the network condition, right? So as a result, the video quality might degrade and uh, also the low FPS. So before we uh, talk about the system, uh, we uh, conduct some pilot measurements, right? We want to understand what is the performance of streaming volumetric videos on commercial uh, off-the-shelf smartphones. So we develop a toy volumetric video streaming app, and this is the experimental setup. We have a state-of-art smartphone, and the video format is basically a point cloud. So every frame we have about 12K to 100K points. So the data source, uh, we do both local fetching and also we uh, fetch the content over commodity LTE, and we just uh, use the on-device GPU and like OpenGL to render the frames. So let's talk about the measurement findings. So first, the good news. So we found that rendering a uncompressed or decoded point cloud is pretty fast, right, as you can see from this table. So the reason is that the point cloud has a very simple data structure. So GPUs, they really like this kind of simple data structure, just to feed the data to GPU, right? And second, which is a bad news, right, so if you transfer such uncompressed point cloud over today's wireless network is pretty challenging. As you can see that uh, the frame size can be very large and the required bit rate is very high. So why is that? Let's look at an example. Uh, if we have 50K points per frame, then you can easily calculate the required bandwidth, right? So for each point, you need at least nine bytes. So X, Y, Z, two bytes each, RGB, one byte each, right? Multiply by 50K, multiply by like 24 FPS, you can get like uh, almost 90 Mbps. So this is really challenging. So then a natural idea is we should do encoding and decoding, right? So the state-of-art encoding decoding algorithm for um, point cloud is called octree. So it's a, a sort of like simple data structure which recursively divides a, a three-dimensional space into sub-regions. So each uh, node will have exactly eight children, right? So I'm not going to describe the detail of this data structure, but if you look at the left table, which shows the decoding performance using a single GPU core, uh, sorry, single CPU core on the smartphone, its performance is pretty bad, right? 
So this is for single core. Uh, and in paper, we also have some multi-core results. Um, it provides very limited gains. So the takeaway message is that so decoding volumetric video streams on today's smartphones is really challenging. So inspired by these measurement findings, we come up with a system, it's called a Nebular. So it's the edge-assisted volumetric video streaming system on smartphones. So uh, yeah, it strategically uses edge, uh, edge computing to improve the performance. So it has these four key design aspects, which I'll quickly uh, describe. Layered content organization, edge assistance, rate adaptation, and viewport adaptation. So the fir uh, first one, the layered content organization, right? So these um, volumetric videos are geometry based, right? So such geometry based uh, content can be easily split and merged, right? For example, at the left side shows a T port, right? You can easily, trivially split the points of this T port into different layers, including a base layer, which describes the, uh, provides the minimum quality for this frame, and also enhanced by multiple enhancement layers, right? So in order to um, get the quality level N, you always fetch the base layer plus N minus one enhancement layers. So this idea has been similar, uh, has been used in traditional video encoding. So it's called the SVC, scalable video encoding. But the uh, advantage here is that for uh, this uh, volumetric video, performing such split and merge, it incurs no overhead, right? But if you apply SV SVC, the overhead is pretty high, like 20 to 25% in terms of the size of the frame. So by using such layered content organization, it allows the video quality to be incrementally upgraded, right? For example, we can always fetch the base layer, then if the network, can di network has additional bandwidth, we can like dynamically upgrade the performance, right? So it's flexible and adaptive to the network dynamics. So the second idea is to we use edge. Um, so the client always sends the six DOF viewport movement to the edge. So the edge will perform a uh, short-term 6DOF viewport prediction and with your transcodes, transcodes the, the content from volumetric video content into regular video stream. And this regular video stream will be transmitted to the client which can easily decode the frame using uh, hardware decoders, right? So there are a couple of challenges, right? For, for example, how to predict the 6DOF viewport movement. So we plan to launch some user study and use some light machine learning technique to address that. The second challenge, how to tolerate the inaccurate prediction, right? So we propose something called a multi-view encoding, which we'll describe in the next slide. And third, uh, at system level, we can also propose some uh, optimization. For example, the encoding, decoding, and prediction can be done in a pipeline manner. So we can possibly also accelerate this point cloud decoding using GPU. So in order to tolerate the uh, inaccurate uh, prediction, so our basic idea is that the edge will render and encode multiple views with a larger field of view uh, to tolerate such inaccuracy, right? For example, look at this figure. So let's say the true position of the camera is at C and the true uh, FOV is this alpha, right? But we can always um, try to enlarge the FOV, right, to uh, tolerate the uncertainty about the prediction. And we can also encode some uh, nearby positions like uh, these red dots and transmit all these encoded frames to the client, right, uh, to tolerate the inaccurate prediction. So the third idea is called rate adaptation. So it's a well-explored topic in a regular video streaming. So it selects the video quality level based on the network capacity. So in our system, we have two separate loops for rate adaptation. One is like between the client and proxy. So because between the client and proxy, we just to transmit regular transcoded videos, right? So we plan to leverage existing rate adaptation algorithm, but we also need to consider like multi-view encoding. So the second loop, which is more interesting, is becoming, is between the uh, proxy and the server. So we need to apply this rate adaptation to volumetric content, right? So this is largely uncharted territory. So we need a lot of research need to be done in this uh, area, like identifying the right KOE metrics. Um, how to adaptively perform in incremental uh, quality upgrade for these layered representation, and also we want the algorithm to be efficient. So the last uh, design aspect is called viewport adaptation, right? So basically for very large scenes, such as we are doing this tour in a city, right, consisting of uh, millions or even hundreds of millions of points, it is simply impossible for the edge to fetch the entire scene, right? So therefore, the edge will prefetch only the content to be perceived by the viewer, right? 
So in this way, we can dramatically reduce the bandwidth consumption and also the processing overhead on the edge. So this one is even more challenging, basically to re requires, for example, pre-segmentation of the scene, also long-term 6UF viewport prediction, because in this case, the loop becomes longer. It uh, involves the server side, right? And also we need to quickly identify the visible portions we can use, for example, some techniques in computer graphics or computer vision, and more details in the paper. Okay, to recap, right, so I think this paper, uh, the main contribution is to uh, bring a new problem to the mobile computing research community, right? So we introduced these volumetric videos, uh, so it's an emerging content type, so it is truly 3D, uh, it provides six degree of freedom and immersive telepresence. Uh, but unfortunately, directly streaming such content on smartphones is really challenging, right? So the Nebula, the, our proposed system, is an edge-assisted volumetric video streaming system on smartphones. So these are four, again, four design aspects. Uh, we propose to use layered content organization allowing incremental quality upgrade. So we strategically use edge computing, um, which will transcode from this complex volumetric content to regular video content, will be, which can be quickly uh, decoded by the client. And also we propose to do some research on the rate adaptation for volumetric content. And lastly, we propose a viewport adaptation for streaming only the visible portion of the content. So we are currently developing the whole system. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to, yeah, send me an email. Yeah, that's the end of my talk, thanks.